In this video, you will learn how to capture and store images with Ionic React using Capacitor. What's up, Sapmonics, and welcome back to another big Ionic tutorial. Today, we're tackling the whole topic of capturing and storing images with Ionic React. We did this for Angular in the past, and it was a very popular video. However, this time we're using React, and it's a tiny bit different. Some Capacitor APIs have changed, and we're using the Capacitor preferences and the file system to build an application that works on the web and also on iOS and Android with the same logic. We just need a few if statements here and there but overall it's gonna be pretty interesting how we can work with a different file path in Capacitor. If you want to follow along link to this tutorial right below the video and of course make sure you hit the like button and stay subscribed to this channel for more videos coming in the future. Also this video is a, a slight adaptation of the great tutorial that Matt Netcow made on the official Ionic documentation page. There's simply just not too many ways to capture images and store them on your device so that's where uh, a lot of the inspiration for this so score came from. Also, if you want to learn even more about Capacitor, Ionic, React and Files, check out a course that just came out in the Ionic Academy. So we got more and more Ionic React content in the Academy now. Go check it out, ionicacademy.com. And now let's dive into the video. All right, so let's get started with our application. Uh, for this one, we're gonna start with a blank Ionic React application and we can already install a few packages. So we need, of course, the Capacitor camera to capture images, Capacitor file system to store those files in our application. And we will also use Capacitor preferences to simply keep track of the stored files. We could also just say like read a directory in the file system that could work as well. But usually if you want to save some kind of like pointer uh, to your files, you can use the preferences or Ionic storage, but preference is also good. Then since I want to test this on a browser, I will also install the Ionic Progressive Web App uh, Elements package since we then get a nice browser preview. And we can actually get started with that uh, and integrate it into our index TSX. So to do this, we just need to import define custom elements and then call that function like somewhere. We can just put it to the bottom here. Uh, that's totally fine. Then let's close this and let's actually run our first Ionic build because if we don't do this and we add the native platform, Ionic usually complains since the www folder is missing. Um, so let's, uh, what is this warning? You currently run what types of so so call it. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Hopefully, let's hope this is fine. <laughs> let's add the platforms. Uh, Ionic cap at iOS to add the iOS platform, and then followed by Ionic cap at Android to add the Android platform. And while we're here. Let's quickly do this. We need to set up permissions for our native project. And we can get started with iOS. So simply, you can do this from here. You don't need to open Xcode for this, although you could. Simply go iOS app app and then find the info P list. And no, I still don't wanna install something for the P list. And then install, uh, no, add the three blocks uh, I can separate them so you can see it a bit better. NS camera usage description, NS photo library at usage description, and NS photo library usage description. Those are the three blocks, the permissions we need, otherwise your iOS application will very likely crash. And now we also need to go to the manifest file for Android. I'm just going to go from here. So it's an Android app source main Android manifest and simply put below here where we already got the permissions block permissions to read the external storage and write the external storage and once we got this i think it's time to just run an ionic surf sit back and relax no actually now the real work begins and we can get started with our application let me just bring this in what do we want to put this this time right or left uh, I vote for right because we, we don't really need the bottom area anyways. Um, doing it side by side as the cool kids do. So here we go. Close this, get more space and let's begin. Um, we're gonna start by first of all adding a little type in here. So let's do a new folder types and let's add a file photo.ts. Within that, we will simply export an interface so we can keep uh, or use this across our application. We will usually have a file path to a real photo file that is stored on the device. And then also the web view path, which is used to display the actual image. 
um, we can close most of the stuff in here and continue now with our home TSX. So we certainly want to call this my gallery or whatever you prefer. Uh, we don't really need any of that stuff in here. So we're going to make this a lot easier, remove the explorer container. And then within our ion content, we will add an ion fab. Uh, vertical, gonna do this to the bottom. Actually, you're not really seeing it if I'm putting it to the bottom. I'm just gonna use it top for this example. Uh, horizontal end and slot fixed. Okay, this should add nothing because we still need an ion fab button in here. And this will on click trigger some kind of function that we haven't defined yet. We will also add an icon. Uh, so go ahead with an ion icon. I would like to use the camera, but I don't expect to <laughs> the import to work. So usually the first time you have to do this manually from ionicons slash icons. I don't know why I clicked here. Sometimes I'm just, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, um, can we just do it like this? Are you happy then? <laughs> uh, not really. If I do void. Oh, come on. Just accept that there's no on click yet. Yeah, there we go. This is the button <laughs> we wanted to have. So now we need to implement the functionality to capture an image. And we're going to do this in a custom hook. So let's create a folder hooks. If you don't have one already, I don't think you will. And call this use photo gallery .ts. Now within our cool hook, we can get started by defining it. So export const use photo gallery equals something make sure you don't uh, spell it correctly um what we're gonna do in here is let's let's implement the the basic stuff first of all so we're gonna use state we use our photo um and then the important part here is actually that in the end we're gonna return all the functions that we want to make available to somebody who's using our hook so we want to uh, make the photos, which is our uh, later our array of stored photos, uh, the take photo and delete photo. We intentionally don't make set photos available to the outside because nobody from the outside should actually set the internal state of our hook. Um, and with that in place, we can go back to our home page because we can now actually use that hook on our uh, home page. So we can import all the relevant functions from our use photo gallery hook. And then on click here, no, on not play, <laughs> on click, we want to call the take photo. There we go. Okay. So now we should be able to do this. Also on this screen, we want to later add our gallery with photos um, and the gallery will display the photos and offer the ability to lead photos. Um, we don't really need to do it in here yet. Uh, let's, let's maybe start by really just implementing the capturing of photos because that is the first and most important part right now. So let's go. Within take photo, we can now use the camera plugin from Capacitor. Uh, so await camera and do we get an import for this? Nah, not today. <laughs> so let's do this import camera from at capacitor camera. And then we can use camera dot get photo. Now the settings are somewhat important because uh, the result type could be three different things. Could be base 64, could be data URL, could be URI. Uh, we're going to use with Yuri base 64 so plain base 64 data URL. Actually, that's kind of a blob. We could also do this. Um, I've been doing this in the latest uh, Ionic Academy course, uh, which is also all about files, file system, um, handling files, opening files and stuff like that with React. So go check it out if you want to learn more about that. Uh, and in there, I use a package called uh, Blob Writer because it's actually quite hard with Capacitor to write a file that is a blob. You can usually only write a string, so you have to con uh, convert everything to base64. But if you have like a video of 100 megabytes, you don't really want to convert that to base64. That's horrible. So anyway, um, we <laughs> in this tutorial, go with the easy way of the URI. Um, camera source. 
whatever you prefer. Mm, I'm gonna use the camera. Ah, this sometimes messed up my video. I'm gonna. Ah, I'll be risky today. Okay, quality. We go with the full quality, and then I'm gonna lock out the photo with my cool lock statement here, and then we can create a new file name. We can use just the current date for the file name, and we now need another function to save the photo. This is actually a bit more complicated. Uh, so let's just do it like this first of all. And let's probably try if we can actually take a photo. Uh, there we go. It opens, please. Yeah, it opens the side cam. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that. And then I also want to see the lock of this. That's even more important. So there we go. This is the photo we get back from the camera. And we don't need anything else. This will run exactly like this on a native device. It will just ask for permissions once and then it will run. Um, we do get back a web path in this case. Um, in the case of a native application, we might get back something different. So let's actually see this in action. Um, I'm gonna go with cap open iOS because first time I need to select signing for my application and then I could run it. Uh, I don't want to run it like this. I actually want to run it with live reload. So here we go is my, oh, I have a problem. Either my cable is uh, done or the connector in my iPhone is done. Let's pray that it's the cable and not my iPhone. So good. Um, but with this command, I can actually have live reload. Where's the command again? Uh, Ionic kept run iOS or Android live reload external. I just added the public host and target because those two questions will be asked by the Ionic CLI. So I just skipped them uh, because I know the values of my device and the public host at this point. Um, once we've done this, our local uh, stuff here should actually work again. So I'm going to capture another picture. Okay, we go with that. And we will also open uh, our reflector app or at least the inspect tool to inspect my local device here in order to see the difference of the path that we get back. Why do we get back a web path blob? Uh, did I make a mistake here? That sounds kind of strange. Anyway, um, can I broadcast this to my... Uh, okay, yes, that's cool. Uh, let's see, let's see if this works. Would be the first time that Reflector works as I want it to. But never say never. <laughs> yeah, oh, there we go. Oh no, this cable. Oh no, why? Why you do this to me, cable? It could have been that nice. Okay. Anyway, so I expect this is also not working now because my cable disconnected. Um, let's see, let's see, can I just do something and check if live reload is still working? Uh, this is really horrible because this lame cable here messed up everything. Could have been so easy, everything was working on first try. Damn. Anyway, we can probably already continue with our save photo file because we know that we will pass a photo of the type camera photo. So this is not the photo type we defined. Uh, camera photo. Oh, you don't like that? Uh, it's called, yeah, it's called photo, right? Um, but not our interface. Oh, this is confusing. Uh, it's deprecated, uh, use photo, yeah. Use photo. Um, but not the photo from our type, right? I want to use the type from here. Oh, that will make things oh very challenging, right? <laughs> because Capacitor has its own photo type. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, well, well. Let's see how far we get with this approach. <laughs> um, I can already do try this again don't try this at home kids um there we go my camera i'm just gonna now try and very carefully do a picture of my desk so there we go and then we should hopefully see the lock in here no okay am i not debugging my phone yeah i'm, I'm certainly not debugging my phone like this application used to be pretty cool 
um, but it isn't. <laughs> Uh, we, we will probably don't see the path, but here's the application at least on my device and we've seen that I could take a picture um, To our save photo file. We will now also add the file name. This is a string and this will uh, Return a promise. Yeah, we could Do this in here promise of a photo, but actually this will be my own photo So this is gonna be very challenging. Let's see um, we will first of all convert our data to a base64 string. So let's define base64 uh, data up here. It's gonna be a string. On top of that, we now need to check if our current platform, so if is platform um, is capacitor or hybrid. I think is hybrid the same as capacitor? I do think so. Um, pretty much just means we're on a native device. So if we're on a native device, we now need to read the path from our photo uh, and not just use what we got in here with a web path. Um, so in the case we're on the web, we could probably do this first since we've seen the web path. I really don't know why my uh, inspect application isn't able to debug this. I could, yeah, there's, there is definitely an application to debug here. Oh, there is it actually, nice. Um, so now we can finally see the difference in the format. Um, so here we got a path, which is a real file. So on a native device, we need to use this to get our base64 data. On the web, we need this to get the base64 data. So um, that means we can actually start with this and say const file equals await file system dot read file because we now want to read our file and you didn't do the import right, did you? Did you add the capacitor? Uh, no, you didn't, I knew it. Uh, you little uh, file, did we actually install it? <laughs> Just asking, uh, I told you to install it in the beginning, but did I install it, capacitor file system? Um, did you mean file system? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, yeah, it was just a matter of that. So then we go ahead with write file and writing a file is always the same. You need a path, that's gonna be our file name. You're gonna need a directory, um, which is usually something like your data directory. Um, you can use cache or documents, doesn't really matter too much. They're a tiny bit different. You can learn about the differences um, here. So this is the documents directory, well, which do we use? We use data. IOS will use the documents Android. It's the directory holding application files. Yeah, data should be, data should be pretty fine. We could probably also use documents, won't make a huge difference. And then the actual data um, of our file, which in this case is photo dot, uh, and we use the, path, right? Because we saw in inspector that yes, we got the path here. Okay. Um, yes, the photo will be certainly set at this point. Um, oh, we need to do the path here, not here. Sorry. And for the web, it's a bit different. Um, because for the web, we need to transform uh, this path, this blob path to base64. Uh, which we can do with a little helper function, base64 from path, uh, which is simply using the fetch API on the web and then uh, getting that file. That's pretty easy, read as data URL and then it returns the value. So then in our else case, we can just say uh, base64 data equals await base64 from path and that's gonna be photo dot web path as we've seen right here on the web, this is our path. Okay, uh, actually we should also probably use the information of the file. Let's say base64 data equals file dot, um, oh, we're not writing a file. What am I doing here? <laughs> we're saving, um, ah, yeah. We, we uh, I, was, I was actually already too fast. We do wanna write something uh, so I can probably put this here already. But first of all, at this point, we need to read the file. So we need to read it and then we get back file.data. This makes a lot more sense. Although we're saving, we first of all need to read from the URI that we get back in the photo. So our app will read from, can I zoom into this? Nice. Uh, our app will either read this path 
or we will use this web path. Either way, we at the end will have base64 data. And with that base64 data, we can now create our saved file uh, at file name using the data using the directory. Okay, that was a big step forward. Um, however, at the end of the saving, we will also update our local information. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna return here uh, the file path, which is just the file name and the web view path. Uh, so this should use our own photo. Should I probably call this, um, how should I call this photo? Um, because it's, it's clashing with the camera photo here. Maybe I could just call it camera photo. Um, Photo type? No, you, nobody would call it photo type. Would I call it image? Photo, let's call it photo item. Oh, and probably not with caps lock. Photo uh, item. That means we probably need to change our type quickly. Um, gonna call this photo item. Gonna call this file photo item. Save, save, save. Um, at the import and then we can return it just like this and that's going to be the web path anyway so we got both in here both informations oh it was just like that great so uh we're saving it the only problem right now is if we're on a hybrid platform what we get back here after saving that file is not the right kind of information. So let's see, are we using save photo anywhere already? No, we're not. Uh, so let's do this in our take photo function. We go with saved file image equals await save photo and passing in the photo and the file name. So then we should have this right here. I'm just gonna add <laughs> locks all across the place. And once we get that file, we can put it into our local array so we can simply call uh, cons new photos. We could also, we could probably do this in one line. Set photos uh, with everything that we already had in photos plus the new saved file image. Cool. Um, let's let's try this on the web first of all. Uh, we got some issues in which file? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Type photo is not assigned. I think we kind of fixed that, didn't we? Um, mm -mm. I think everything looks cool. Um, what do you complain about? Oh, come on. I'm just gonna restart this um, because I do actually think that our code is right. I don't have any anything red in here. Uh, it really is photo item is not assignable to type photo, yeah. Uh, that means our local array should consist of these kind of items. No issues found. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, let's capture an image. Uh huh. There we go. Please be a bit faster. Okay, well, this is still the information we had before. Then we called. Uh, let's go through this together because this is really important. Uh, then we were reading the base64 data and we were writing it to the file system. Then we got the log from use photo gallery. So this is here our saved file. And yeah, save file and file system also works on the browser. And what we then get back here in terms of the saved file is the file path, which is the name. Uh, we see this name here as well. And the web view path, still the same information that we had above. Now let's see the difference to this on a device. Um, going ahead with this. I capture a black image. I don't want to touch this. <laughs> Can I use this photo? Um, there we go. Using this and then we see, mm, mm, mm. okay, we got the photo back as we had before. Um, we read the file from the file system and the file couldn't be opened because there's no such file. That is an interesting observation. Um, read file uh, let's see so that means this year fails um, yeah and then that's 
That definitely fails because we haven't written an actual file to that. Uh, the file is at the photo path. We said we wanted to do it with a path. Who changed that line? Like we wanted to use it exactly like this. We wanted to use photo.path. This one was the one where we were reading the information. <laughs> okay, we hit the save. Um, we did a reload. Let's do it again. Take the picture, use the photo, and then let's see. Ah, that looks a lot better. So now we've um, re we read the file from the photo path. Uh, we get back the URI, which looks like this. And in the end, this is the object we get back. File path, once again, the name, just like we had on the web. Uh, and then the web view path is interesting. This is capacitor uh, something. Did we already add something to fix this? I don't think so, because the um, our application is not able to display a file from this local URI, a local URL. So on the... Um, on mobile, we need a fix for this, and we can convert this path using another capacitor function. So let's do this inside the save photo. We go ahead with if is platform hybrid once again, uh, hybrid. In that case, we're gonna return a different kind of object. We will return, not this, we're gonna return for the file path, um, saved file dot Yuri. Um, and for the web view path, we're not using this, but we will use capacitor and then convert file source. So this utility function to convert a file path into a usable source depending on the native web view implementation. Let's pass in our saved file URI and then let's observe the difference. So remember, previously we had this as a file path and the web view path. Let's hit save and let's do this again. Capture, capture here, use photo. And then the only interesting thing is our final uh, object that we get back. And this now, uh, at least our file path is different now. So this is the file path to the exact file right now. The web view path in my eyes actually looks completely the same. This is interesting. Didn't it look like this just before? I should have captured this capacitor localhost. This is probably this is because we're using live reload. This could actually be the case. That's going to be something we should observe. Let's run a standard Ionic build and deploy the application from Xcode or Android Studio. Because this is interesting. We might see a different behavior if we're using live reload. And that can really confuse you and um, us in general. And so no, I don't want to deploy it to the iPhone 14 Pro. I want to deploy it to my iPhone. Thank you. So keep in mind that if you're using a live reload, you're pretty much serving uh, your Ionic application from your local uh, server uh, and not just as you would later do with a real application that's built to your uh, device. So here's the app again. Uh, and let's try the same. What the? <laughs> oh, I had... <laughs> Uh, I usually do Ionic, uh, Ionic Cap Build iOS. If you just do Ionic Build, it of course just builds the web project and then you would have to run um, Ionic Cap Sync or Ionic Cap Copy to copy over the resources into your native project. If you run Ionic Cap Build iOS or Android, it will do all the fun for you uh, just at once. So usually this is my go-to command if I wanna build um, for native. You could also run uh, that would actually work as well, but don't want to confuse you too much right now. So final try, capture image with a native build, use photo, and let's see. Now we finally get back um, just a URI here, up here, and then we do have that web view path again. But if we haven't done this, I think we would have failed uh, since the photo does not have a web path. If we have used the same code, we see there is no web path available if you just capture a, uh, an image with a native device. So keep that in mind. There is a difference between live reload and building the application um, uh, and building the application uh, just once and then deploying it to your device. Okay, now I think we should just continue and use our 
um, web preview now, since we got most of the functionality uh, actually done. We changed our local uh, array, right? So we updated the photos, that seems good. Uh, we're able to get this. Um, we probably also wanna add a delete function. Maybe we can do this uh, real quickly. So I'm gonna just add this and replace it right here. The only thing we need to do is we need to filter our local array of files for the for the file name that we wanna delete and then set this new filtered array for photos. And at the same time, we may wanna delete the file from our data directory, but that's really everything we need. Now we also wanna keep track of all the photos that we've stored. And as I said in the beginning, you could read the data on the, the file system, but usually you wanna do something with preferences or Ionic storage. If you wanna learn more about the differences, I also got a video about Ionic storage with a SQLite, where there's a capacitor preferences. So go check that out if you wanna learn more. However, I think we will just set a const here to access our photos. And then we will add and use effect block, which will run in the beginning to load all the stored files. I'm gonna give in an empty dependency array, so it just runs once. And then we're gonna define a function, load saved equals async function. There we go. And after it, we can um, simply call load saved. Okay, this will run in the beginning. So what we wanna do is we wanna get the value, we can extract the value property from await preferences. Preferences, oh come on, you could have done an automatic import for that. That's not too hard. <sighs> preferences, and that's not how you spell it, preferences. <laughs> um, there we go. Now we got it finally. Uh, preferences, and there are not too many functions, so we'll just get this. And we're gonna pass in for the options, the key we want to read, which is in our case, the const we defined at the top. So this should uh, pretty much return nothing interesting <laughs> right here. Uh, there is no information inside. However, um, we will make sure that there will be information by adding another use effect block. And this one will run whenever our local photos change. So whenever they change, this use effect is triggered. And then we're gonna run preferences.set. Uh, again, same key as before. Photos pref key and the value JSON stringify because we can't write any objects here. Uh, a JSON stringified version of our photos. So that means if I now select an image or capture an image, uh, there we go, hello, please. <laughs> um, it will be saved to our preferences. If I now refresh the application, we get the log here, file path, web view path. So we got the information up here. And to extract this from this line, uh, we need just need to parse this. So we can convert this const photos in prefs equals, uh, do we get a value? If we do have a value, we'll call JSON parse to make it an actual object. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna use an empty array. And this should be of the type photo item array. Okay, looks good. Now, there's just one more thing. Once again, we need a little if. So if we're not on a uh, hybrid platform, in this case, it's actually the opposite we're gonna implement. In that case, we somehow need to convert this because we only got this blob and we got the name, but we can't really display a blob. So uh, we now need to read that blob to get back the base64 data in case we're here on a native device, we don't have to. Um, so let's do this. Uh, actually, we can also uh, already do set photos, um, photos in pref because we will just uh, change the photos. So. Uh, do we want to do, uh, let's do a for loop. Let's, because I, I sometimes like a for loop more than a map. Um, it just clarifies things. For photo of photos in prefs. So for every item that we got in here, we're gonna do something. We can do this in uh, any way again. Hey, where's my information? Do we have some, some information in here? Holy, where's my information gone? We just had it like a second before. 
how did <laughs> how did my information end up being lost? Didn't we save it to the preferences? Uh, where, where, uh, 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 um, the info, uh, no, it should be in uh, index DB. No, there's actually, I'm going to clear this anyway. Uh, Ionic storage. I'm not even using Ionic storage in here. Uh, shouldn't have that. Capacitor. Uh, yeah, this is where it is. So where is my image gone? I'm going to capture a new one. Um, this application is really trolling me. Okay, so now we we had that information. We had it just in there. Why was it removed? I feel like we're not saving it to the preferences correctly. Um, either we're not saving it to the preferences. We certainly do. Here's this. Um, oh, am I hitting? Oh, this is crazy. How can this be? This is impossible. All right, a little helpful hack, checking if photo length is zero, because in the beginning, when our application starts, this effect will actually be called with an empty array and it did override the preferences all the time. So we don't really wanna do this. So this is a little hack to prevent that scenario. Now back to this, uh, our hybrid platform, because this is still not the information we need to, to display the photo. Uh, we can now go ahead and call the file system one last time, I think that's really the last time, to read a file. And we're gonna just read it from the photo.filepath, so from here, um, and using our directory, uh, just the one we used across the application. We could probably also define this at the top just to make sure that it works all the time. So if we do it like this, uh, we should in the beginning get back something like this, which looks pretty much already like base64 data. So let's just assign this to the photo web view path um, by putting in data image JPEG um, base64 and then it should be a valid data. So file dot data. And then we finally have the right uh, information in our preferences. Yes, exactly like this. And we can even have more images now. So I'm gonna do a second image. Um, da -da -da -da, hit save. And then we should at some point, if we refresh the application, yes, two images, two web view path. And with all of that information in place, let's create a little photo gallery component finally. So let's do under components, photo gallery.ts and within that gallery can we make this a bit smaller nah, we're gonna see this in a second anyway um we gonna define our photo gallery uh which is a react functional component equals something that we still have to define and then export export default photo gallery yeah that's almost how you spell it that file looks good. Uh, any problem with this? Yeah, we're not returning something. So let's return something and then we are almost happy. Now, what we're gonna pass to this gallery is something. So we wanna include this component on our page here. And to do so, we need to define a few types. We could also do this with any, but usually defining some props is the better way to handle stuff with TypeScript. So this will get some photos of the type photo item, uh, most likely an array. And um, well, we can actually import the hook in here ourselves. So let's just do it like this. Then we'll make sure that this uses the props and that we extract the photos in here. Now, if we do it like this, it should turn our place where we include the photo gallery. Uh, if we just include it like this, it should make it red because we still need to add the photos. So we're gonna do photos equals the photos that we get back from use gallery. We could probably also, yeah, let's probably do it less like this. Let's also uh, add this and then we're gonna add it to the props because then we don't even have to, um, then we don't even have to use the hook in here at all. Like everything comes through from the props. Uh, this is a function that gets a file name, which is a string. 
uh, and delete doesn't do anything. So, okay, cool. Okay, now for the actual component, uh, we just need a little grid. Let's use the ion grid. And then we need an ion row. And then we need columns. We need columns based on the photos. So photos dot map. Um, we're gonna get the photo and the current ID. And then we open the bracket and use ion call size. No sign. What the <laughs> size? Hello. Um, you don't understand ion call size. Didn't you add like ion call? You did ionic core components. Like where are you getting them from? What's your problem today? Um, I don't know. Really strange. Oh come on. Now I now I made you mad. Like really mad. Um, what is refers ion grid? Um, from at ionic react. What is going on? <laughs> I think I have the messed up the brackets in some. I just trolled myself so unbelievable hard. This file, of course, needs to be a TSX. <laughs> and it turns out. Uh, kids out there, if you make the same mistake, leave a comment below if you ever did this before. I think it's not the first time this happened to me. Um, it's just so. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, well, okay. Um, I think I now also confused the live reload with uh, changing all those file names. So let's go back to the photo gallery. We do have our columns. Inside of the column, we will display them. We can use ion image for this using source equals to photo dot something. Um, the web view path should be fine. That should be our base 64 data. So let's see, we actually, I think, Shouldn't we see something in here? Oh, we do see something nice. <laughs> uh, child in a list. Yeah, we can do all of this now. Um, but since we now see something, everything feels so much better. Uh, also, if I do capture another image, um, it should be automatically added now, right? There we go. There we go. Uh, also on reload. Yes, all the photos are still there. Um, now we just need a little uh, button to delete this. We can put this into a fab. Uh, I'm just gonna bring in a little snippet because I don't wanna make any more typos. I, I think we've had our fair share of uh, typos and missed things today. Um, to confirm the deletion, we can use the uh, ion alert. Let's do this, const display alert equals use ion alert. It's a cool hook that we can just use to trigger an alert. And then our confirm delete could simply look like this, a function that uses the display alert hook with a message, buttons, and on dismiss, uh, we're gonna delete the photo unless the role is cancel. And then we do have that. I wanna cancel this. I wanna delete this. I wanna delete this. And then it works. Let's see if it also works in our application now. Uh, I still fear to pick up my phone, so <laughs> for now use it like this. Um, and then we have an epic image in here. Uh, I'm gonna be very careful to also snap another image. Use photo. And it seems to work, nice. Um, we can also remove an image. Yes, it works also. And then we finally went through all the problems, the trials and errors uh, of the this um, image guide. In general, it's not too hard, really. The main meat in, uh, of this uh, tutorial is our use photo, photo gallery hook, uh, which I also named wrongly. So I really did everything to uh, throw sticks uh, through my legs and uh, make the progress harder than expected. But um, saving the photo is really just about getting the photo from the camera, uh, then picking some, some kind of path where you can save it, uh, our local state is just to keep track of the photos and 
Um, this is the magic of writing it to the file system or uh, alternatively using the base64 from the pad with the fetch API and this helper function. But really, that's all you need and pretty much everything that you need to understand about handling images with Ionic React. All right, and that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. Well, it was actually not really quick, uh, kind of long guide on handling images with Ionic React and Capacitor. If you got any other questions, please let us know in the comments and hopefully you stay subscribed to the channel if you haven't done so, do it right now and like the video for more videos coming in the future. And now, good luck with image capturing. I hope you don't encounter all the errors that I did. And I will hopefully catch you inside the next video. Until then, as always, happy coding, Simon.